What's up everyone, Tech Habit Ashery back again, and I'm doing a little bit of a different, uh, well kind of impromptu video, I guess. I'm away visiting family for a weekend, and they are out, and they're going to be out for a few hours. So I was going to upgrade the Dell Inspiron 113180 that I did a review on recently. And I'm going to put in this Intel Wi-Fi card, it's dual band, and I just wanted to show you some of the comparisons between what the stock card that comes with it can do and what the upgraded Intel card can do. So I'll show you the teardown, uh, I'll show you the installation, and then we will look at the performance. Okay, I just want to get this out of the way first. I am not sponsored by anybody, but I did just get in the iFixit ProTech Toolkit, and this thing is incredible. I was pretty skeptical, I've got a fairly good set of tools already, but nothing that's as comprehensive as this. And one thing about this that I feel like they don't advertise very well, everything's magnetized. So you're not going to lose screws and stuff like that. It's There's all kinds of tweezers and pry tools. It's fantastic. And I'm so glad that I have this now. I'm definitely going to be using it every single time I'm taking something apart in the future. So that being said, first things first, take out all of the screws. Once you've got that done, you're just going to use a little effort to pry this thing open. Basically what you want to do is you want to disconnect all the little plastic clips around the edge and then you can just slide the bottom panel off. There's not much to it, but start at the edge, either edge, and then start working your way around. Once you've done that and you've got the bottom off, be sure not to forget about this ribbon cable. It doesn't take any effort to pull out, but just be aware. For the sake of doing a best practice, also make sure you disconnect the battery. It is this black cable right here. It's got a couple side clips you got to pull off and then it pops right out. And I also disconnected the touchpad ribbon cable for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Probably just uh, saw the cable and thought, oh, I should disconnect that. Now we come to the actual wireless card itself. It's got a little retention plate that the screw goes onto since the card is like a, it's like a two-thirds size card. So uh, just one screw and that little retention plate and it should come right off. And here's the actual wireless card up close. Be sure you find the white and black arrows for the antennas. And here is the new Intel card and you can see the white and black arrows in the upper right hand corner. So I go ahead, insert it, it fits perfectly, no issues at all, except that these white and black antenna cables were very difficult to put back on. So I've skipped ahead a few minutes in the hopes of saving myself a little bit of embarrassment, but once you get the card inserted and you have the antenna cables connected, all you need to do is screw it back in place. You do not need that little silver retention bracket, but be aware that you have to actually take the screw out of the bracket. It's in there pretty tight. With that done, just reconnect the touchpad ribbon cable. I really don't know why I did that. I don't think that's necessary for you to do. But reconnect anything you've disconnected, so in this case, my touchpad ribbon cable and the black battery cable. Then just me just need to snap the base back on. I personally found it's easier to do the side that does not have the HDMI port on it, so it's just the USB and the audio connection. And start there, kind of hook it on, and then snap it all into place. Once you do that, rescrew the base in. Okay, so that is the install process, so please take my lackluster computer repair skills and just throw them out the window, because I wasn't, uh, wasn't the smoothest install ever. But you have an idea for uh, how, it oper how to go through and do an install for this particular um, system. And the actual the Wi-Fi card does work out of the box. It takes a, a couple seconds to go ahead and uh, reconfigure itself once Windows is loaded. But if you've got a Wi-Fi uh, password already entered into the system, then uh, you should be able to just plug and play and leave it alone. Although I went ahead and installed the Intel driver from Intel's website 
just to try to troubleshoot some issues I had, and we're going to discuss that real quick. So I just had to do some uh, testing bef with the Dell before I did the actual Intel uh, upgrade to the Intel card. The Dell, as we discussed in my original review, only has a 2.4 gigahertz network. I copied a 597 megabyte file over the wireless network to one of my cousin's computers, and it took about seven minutes to run the transfer. So uh, not exactly great performance, um, but it's, it's workable. So generally speaking, within wireless technologies, the five gigahertz standard is usually understood to have less interference and therefore allows for faster throughput of data than the 2.4 gigahertz band does. However, I think out here at my family's place, there's a lot of five gigahertz interference because the transfer, when I tried to do it, initially told me it was gonna take an hour and a half before eventually failing. Now, this is significantly longer, obviously, than the 2.4 gigahertz signal. And I noticed this issue where the wireless card would start and then stop, and it would start and stop over and over. So I was thinking maybe it was a driver issue. So I installed the Intel driver from their website, as opposed to using the built-in one from Microsoft. That uh, stopped the start and stop issue with the wireless card looking like it was constantly being detached and reattached. However, it only brought the estimated completion time down to one hour and ten minutes, and it would still eventually fail to complete the transfer. I got Wi-Fi Analyzer on the system just to kind of see how things stacked up. Um, and the Intel card seems to receive significantly less interference than the Dell card does on the 2.4 gigahertz signal. The 5 gigahertz receives the most interference. In comparison, the Intel 2.4 gigahertz was took it right about 5 minutes to complete the transfer, while on the 5 gigahertz signal it couldn't complete it at all. So, I don't know if it's interference issues, I don't know if perhaps my cousin's computer with its 5 gigahertz radio is having an issue. So I'm going to test this when I get home as well. Okay, so we've discussed all that. Now I'm going to go ahead and tack on the results from home. And I'm home. So thanks to the miracles of editing, it looks like nothing has changed at all. I know. All right, so I'm home. I did my testing. And it looks like it is wireless interference out at my family's house because things are significantly better here. Uh, my 5 gigahertz signal for my home router uh, gets about negative, yeah, negative 33 uh, decibel milliwatts. The 2.4 gigahertz goes from the negative low, th the low negative 30s. Uh, I've seen it getting down to negative 25 decibel milliwatts. So it's a much better signal here. There's much less interference. And it also shows in the actual file transfers. So I went ahead and ran some other file transfers, including some transfers that I did with my Hackintosh. So on my home PC, when I transferred the files, it took 32 and a half seconds. When I transferred a, a file from my Hackintosh over to this uh, little Dell Inspiron with the Intel wireless card in it, it took just under two minutes at one minute and 57 seconds. So, and I think that file was right at 800 megabytes is what I had on my Hackintosh. So that's, uh, it. I guess in closing, I'll just say that it, I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. It is something that's completely doable, and I think it makes this little system uh, much better. It, with a 5 gigahertz signal, generally speaking, <laughs> it's less prone to wireless interference, um, which my family's uh, estate aside uh, seems to be the case here at my house. Uh, it also picks up all of the wireless signals from my neighbors that are nearby. So I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. It's cheap. It doesn't take too much time to do and install. And Windows 10 has the basic driver already installed and ready for you. Um, you know, it does that little on and off thing for me. Maybe it won't do that for you. But if it does, just go grab the driver from Intel and you'll be set. So uh, something a little different I wanted to try out. So I hope you all enjoyed. Questions, comments are below. Thanks for watching. Bye.